we've got to talk about another solid series premiere, Yay. that being Torchwood. Kiss, kiss, bang, bang, baby. My favorite episode of Torchwood, for <laughs> obvious reasons. Excuse me. Have you seen a blowfish driving a sports car? Thank you. I just Would love you? how straight face Gwen is about that. And I wish Torchwood had more like straight face reaction that one has to aliens and the weird stuff Torchwood does because it ha- happens in Cardiff all the time. Yeah, and I, I actually like the moment where, like, right after that, the old lady is like, bloody Torchwood, even though that makes no sense because shouldn't we be retconning everyone but whatever i like the idea that like like within this community torchwood has become like kind of a public fixture where everyone just knows oh weird alien stuff and eh, it's just torchwood being weird against bloody torch just leave them i actually like it even though it's kind of you know they should be retconning everyone i like it because like they're so bad at their job they can't even keep it a secret <laughs> <laughs> or maybe it's just that it's escalated so much that they figured, you know what? After Abaddon, let people know about aliens from now on. How exactly would they explain that? You know, maybe you're right. Maybe they just gave up after the giant demon comes out. At that point, it's pretty pointless to be trying to drug. Let's just drug the water. <laughs> it's like, come on, man. It's just. This is getting ridiculous. Next time, what are we going to do when Godzilla comes back? Plus, as we learned in They Keep Killing Susie, giving people too much retcon can turn them into a psychopath with Torchwood as the trigger word. (laughs) So true. Brain damage. uh, Yeah. We open with the Torchwood team minus Jack intercepting this weird blowfish alien who's high on cocaine. (laughs) randomly go into this lady's house and threaten this lady. So the real tense moment, and then Jack's back, he shoots the alien in the freaking head. And hooray! For a little trivia side note, they reused the blowfish alien again for like a cameo appearance when all the Doctor's foes show up in the Pandorica opens to trap the Doctor in the Pandorica at the end. Hmm. If you look closely, you can see him in the background. And I'm like, wait a minute. Blowfish has beef with the Doctor too, as well as Torchwood. <laughs> if I'm not wrong, we will also be seeing at least the mask again, I think, in this series of Torchwood. So I'll be looking for him now. It's actually surprisingly nice continuity to have Jack have been gone for eight months. And it made me realize something regarding, like, last time we talked about Jack and sort of like his role in series three and how his character didn't seem all that and formed by what actually happened in series one of Torchwood. I feel like the relationship between Doctor Who and Torchwood and maybe also Sarah Jane, although I can't be too sure, is kind of like the relationship between Marvel movies and Marvel TV shows. The TV shows fail to impact anything in the movies even remotely outside of like the tiniest of plot points. And yet, with a fair amount of consistency, the movies, when something big happens, those will have ripple effects in at least some of the shows. And so I feel like we're doing that here with Jack, where, like, Jack's experiences in Torchwood not informing his character in Doctor Who, but his Doctor Who are informing his character in Torchwood. Plus, with the Marvel Cinematic Universe, it was kind of counterintuitive with one of the big selling points being everything connected with having television spinoffs that they won't be able to connect in fear of stomping on each other's toes. <laughs> yeah, although that does kind of get into one of my uh, niggles about this episode, which is that it's really all about trust. How much trust does Jack have and how much trust has he earned? And how much trust does he want and all that stuff. And part of it is him just refusing to tell Gwen or anyone where he's been for eight months. Normally, I kind of understand it when Jack is kind of apprehensive to reveal stuff about himself. But why couldn't you just tell them, hey, something happened with Harold Saxon and I kind of got trapped in like outside of time for eight months. Like just tell him I was with the doctor and something happened and I got like jumped eight months in time. They would understand that. Yeah, it's sort of like where they haven't really gotten down Jack's dynamic with the Torchwood team quite yet, but it's much 
more improved now. Yeah. I do like also that, again, could argue, and I know that some people are going to argue this is just a case of, oh, people complained about it in Series 1, and so we changed it. But I like to think that the sort of more, the more put-together, professional-seeming team dynamic is a result of everyone having gone through what they did in Series 1 and having learned that, no, we, we really can't keep being like this. And now Jack is kind of ironically the one behind the curve and the one who's a little bit of the odd man out on his own team. Yeah, he needs to uh, evolve the rest of the team and be more open, not keep secrets like freaking Oliver Queen. Or, more appropriately, like John, John Hart, who's uh, <laughs> certainly a character. Yes, one way of putting it. It is sort of a thing in these radio dramas that the team suspects that one day Jack is going to leave again and that time he won't be coming back ever. I am curious. Did you have like any particular first impressions of John like showing up for the first time? I I knew details about the character before seeing this episode for the first time and I would have liked to have just him be a nice surprise. At the time of was airing, it's like they used getting James Marshall to show up as a big selling point when marketing the second season of Torchwood. So people knew that he would be showing up regardless, but I mean, he gets a faint interest and they do a very good job right off the bat showing how dangerous Captain John Hart is. So later on, when he tries to dispatch the Torchwood, Twig team getting them all separated, not too out of the realm of possibility that he's a believable threat. Yeah. Jack's past wasn't always great, and John Hart is a harsh reminder of that. Yeah, he's almost literally like a manifestation of Jack's past. Jack is so ashamed of it that that's why he's constantly running away from it and refuses to talk about like what he's been through and who he really is with people. All throughout series one of Torchwood, that led to, like, issues with the team. And I like to think that the more I see, the more my interpretation of that whole dynamic is sort of... I I feel more strongly about that because the team is kind of the best and most comfortable with each other that they've been on screen. And it's because Jack has been gone for almost a year. And as soon as he comes back, the dysfunction starts again in earnest. Yeah, Jack uh, seems like because he won't open up, be open with other people, it causes like a a kink in everything. Yeah, setting up and setting up and setting up the idea that this is all going to reach a boiling point where Jack has to be open with people because he just can't be an effective leader and be this super private guy at the same time. Like he's not Nick Fury. That didn't even work for Nick Fury. Like, you can't keep everything to yourself and expect people to trust you as a leader. And to use another comparison, on 24, whenever Jack Bauer keeps secrets from his CTU colleagues, it never goes well for him. Secrets never work, okay? Listen listen right now, CW writer. Your hero has to be open. Okay, we need those secrets to be out. Okay, have your man children actually communicate their emotions and what they're going through, okay? Because keeping secrets will lead to someone strapping a bomb to your chest, John. (laughs) And John is like a great dark mirror for Jack in that way. He's got like all of the charm and the humor and the flirtation, but he's not remotely trustworthy and he doesn't trust anyone in sort of like the life that Jack left behind and Jack is actively running from to the point where he doesn't tell anyone about who he is because Jack has at least found meaning where John hasn't. And John is like a super nihilist where it's like, nothing matters except me. Maybe you wouldn't feel that way. Let people in, John. This is an intervention. John Hart. It's jacket being an opposite color of Jack, where Jack's was a navy blue color and John Hart's is like bright red. (laughs) And I'm sure that there are people who like that jacket. I think it looks dorky. We got to give compliments to the jackets on this show. It's not my style. I can't do the tassels. (laughs) Happily wear that around. I'm ironically. James Masters, he can pull it off for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. John Hart is like the that embarrassing ex, like when you were going through your bad boy stage that you tried to hide. Now he's back and now it's like, oh dear God. <laughs> That's a good way to interpret John Hart's dynamic with Jack. Yeah. In the comic books that are being written by 
John Barrowman and his sister. That's currently ongoing. Raymond Pike, the actor who plays Captain Jack and his sister. Link in the description. I, I like that the episode doesn't bother with any pretense about John being a character that you should trust. Like immediately, it's just like, nope, this guy is totally shady and you know he's going to turn on them. The circumstances are going to be questionable. I, I will say this episode does kind of have to make at least one character stupid or at least very, very forgetful in order to really get going, which is uh, rule one or one of the rules that Jack gives Gwen is like, keep him in front of you. And then she fails to do that. Like he only gets the jump on her because she didn't keep him in front of her. You had one job, Gwen. And that was immediately after they found the canister John Hart is, at, is after. And given that he lies to them about it being a radioactive weapon, I mean, if the Torchwood team wasn't as together like, say, Churn series, series 1, John Hart may have gone away. But now that the Torchwood team has gotten their issues resolved, John Hart can't beat them. Well, he doesn't beat them, but he does interestingly basically get out of the episode scot-free like he hasn't gained anything but he also hasn't lost anything and i kind of want to read into that the last lines of the episode him saying he found gray gwen asks what that means and jack after a long pause still refuses to tell them anything and i want to read into the fact that like jack is still not trusting the team with information about himself and we've basically personified his mistrust and like untrustworthy impulses in john and john is not really defeated at the end he just leaves to go do whatever it is he wants jack's issues are not resolved and john is not really resolved and i don't think either of those things are going to be fully resolved until the other is you know we will get into episodes later in the season when jack being so secretive plays into a little bit of his character my last note is kind of just how effectively tense just the whole last third of this episode i really 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 like because it's this constant switching of different moods as the situation is constantly changing. First, it's like you think John has kind of outsmarted everybody, but then all of them, like all four plus Jack, just ambush him, guns drawn, and they're like, psych, gotcha. It does kind of feel like the newest Mission Impossible movie where the audience is constantly getting the rug pulled from under them, but thankfully they limited how many times they do that because with that type of pulling the rug under the audience's feet, you can only get away with that for so much until the audience starts expecting it and then the twist loses any possible stain it once had i think what leads to them being able to do that is one it is kind of twists but not all of them are like twists it's not just the audience getting the rug pulled out from under them it's all of the characters because we start with john he thinks he's about to get what he wants the whole team shows up and it's really satisfying to see all of them on like a united front for once including jack and they all are like ready to school him. They make him open the thing. And then the big twist is, it turns out it wasn't even what John thought it was, which was like a treasure or something. It was a bomb and it's strapped to him and it's gonna blow up. And so that's a little bit of a surprise, but the whole team takes it in stride and they're like, okay, I guess you're gonna die, John. We're just gonna take you to the car, drive you out beyond city limits, and then leave you to explode. John Hart and and copying himself to Gwen, which would give Torchwood an incentive to save his life because they don't want their teammate Gwen to die. <laughs> right. Owen is apparently an improviser now. I mean, hey, he's we've seen him improvise before. High-intensity situation. Yeah, I just, I really like that the whole thing is like a string of reversals to where you never feel totally comfortable. Like, you never feel like you're safe knowing what the situation is. 
Yeah, it kind of makes me think that the version of Miracle Day when Chris Chibnall was writing it out with Russell T. Davies may have been better than the one that we got. That's what you have to Nick, or you get like a 20 responses that'll go on well until next year. Yeah, but that's a discussion for another time. We're all thoughts for this episode. I just want to say I love it. It's a lot of fun. It's one of the best. For me, it was the best episode for to a character that I absolutely love and enjoy. He's basically playing one of my favorite favorite characters of all time is again and you know i got crush on you know spike so of course i'm going to love it in that way and yeah it was just a lot of fun and i love that they have a blowfish on cocaine <laughs> one case of using an animal for an alien design that i actually do like yes they sold me over of having it being a red fish because Red is my favorite color. <laughs> and two, it's just the idea of a fish humanoid walking around wearing an Earth suit is just awesome. And it would fit more in Torchwood, whereas if it was on Doctor Who, I would probably call it up for being lazy. I do think, if I can just speak to that, there may also just be a weird sort of like primal mammal brain element to it where like fish faces seem more alien than like mammal faces yeah also the makeup job was pretty good on this as well so that also helped for a little bit of trivia about an episode of torchwood that was never made the opening scenes with the blowfish was actually supposed to be the closing act for a proposed torchwood episode about a supermarket for aliens that live in cardiff huh i would have liked to see that episode but oh well i guess mm -hmm. Yeah, it kind of makes me kind of bitter about Torchwood changing its format to more serialized storytelling after series two. Yeah, but, you know, it is what it is. Two really solid series openers. And uh, next time we meet up, we're going to be talking about something very different. But until then, bye-bye. Yeah, bye. -bye. See ya, bye.